Beatles. Leaping down upon the underworld to smash Ganglin comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is part two of the story entitled The Nest in Diamonds. The famous Bannister diamond necklace, valued at $500,000, is missing. Lucy Ridgway, Mrs. Bannister's social secretary, is in jail, accused of being implicated in the theft. So far, two necklaces, both fake, but resembling the real necklace, have been discovered. One which was stripped from Mrs. Bannister's neck by thugs, as she was leaving the Starlight Club, and another by the Blue Beetle, which he found in the possession of Don Ricardo, leader of the Starlight Orchestra, and a man called Max, whom the Blue Beetle suspects of being McCaffrey, an investigator for the Acme Insurance Company. As our story opens, Patrolman Dan Garrett, who is secretly the Blue Beetle, is discussing the case with his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz the Chemist. You could have knocked me over with a feather when I picked up that necklace at Ricardo's apartment and discovered it was a fake. <laughs> I can well imagine. That makes two fakes. Yes. Uh, what about McCaffrey, Don Ricardo, and Trigger, as you say he was called? I imagine I'll run into them again shortly. Couldn't you arrest them? Only on suspicion. Remember, I caught them with a fake necklace as the Blue Beetle. The Blue Beetle can't testify in court. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but it seems a shame. According to this morning's paper, Ricardo was sailing for South America tonight. What? Are you sure? Well, as I remember, it said Don Ricardo, popular Starlight Club orchestra leader, is sailing tonight on the Cristobal for South America. Well, I've got to stop him somehow. Yeah, but how? The ship sails at midnight, doesn't it? I believe so. I've got it. We'll pick him up just as he's sailing and hold him as a material witness in this case. At least it'll give us a little more time to run down the real thief. Well, won't Ricardo's arrest scare off the others? I'll wait until the last moment before sailing. In the meantime, I've got a busy time ahead of me. Can I help you, Danny? Uh, yes, Doc. You might have your recording equipment hooked up to your telephone. So if I should call you at any time on my portable wireless telephone, you could record anything I pick up. All right, Danny. Uh, where are you going now? To get the combination of a banister safe from Lucy Ridgway. I'll be back shortly and pick up the camera and photoelectric equipment. I may catch a thief with a camera. <laughs> If you think you can double-cross me, Mrs. Bannister, and get away with it, you're mistaken. But do you yourself suggested the plan for hiding the necklace so I could collect insurance and pay off my gambling debt? Yes, but the necklace you left in the safe was a fake. A fake? Well, what do you mean? Just that. I took that necklace from the safe myself. The fence examined the necklace and declared it a fake. What's a fence? A man who disposes of stolen goods. But you said nothing about disposing of the jewels. You said they were to be hidden for a while until I could raise the money to refund the burglary insurance payment later when the jewels were found. Don't be a fool, Mrs. Bannister. Where could you ever hope to raise money to pay back the insurance? My husband, he would... He would divorce you if he knew the facts in the case. Uh, beg pardon, madam, but there's a police officer outside, a patrolman Garrett, who wishes to speak to you. Wishes to speak to me? What... Well, what shall I do? He must have been waiting some time, madam. I didn't see him come in. Uh, what do you think, Mr. McCaffrey? I'll see him. It won't do any harm. Oh, very well. Uh, you may show him in, William. Very good, madam. You don't think he overheard anything, do you? No, he's only a cop. The trollman Dan Garrett. Good evening, Mrs. Bannister. Oh, I, I see you're not alone. Uh, this is Mr. McCaffrey of the Acme Insurance Company. Oh, I... He's as much interested in my missing necklace as I am. I can well imagine. I uh, just wanted to ask you to identify this photograph I have here. Well, that's my husband. And he's standing in front of our wall safe. Uh, what's that he has in his hand? It's my necklace. When was this photograph taken, officer? Late this afternoon by a secret device at your country estate. 
Then he had the real necklace all the time and is just putting it back in the safe. Perhaps. Well, Mr. McCaffrey, I suppose this will clear up your part in this case. The law will interview Mr. Bannister later. Yeah. Yes, of course. Well, I'd better be going. I have a lot of details to attend to. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Bannister. Goodbye, Officer uh, uh, Garrett. I'll be seeing you. Yes, I'm sure of it, Mr. McCaffrey. Did you record the Bannister-McCaffrey conversation early this evening, Doc? Yes, Danny. It wasn't very loud, but it's intelligible. Good. I had the mouthpiece of the portable wireless phone against the wall while they were talking in the next room. The butler almost caught me. Well, you got enough to make it hot for McCaffrey. Yes, and I'm going to make it hotter yet for him if my hunch is right. Well, what are you going to do? Well, as they say in Bridge, the Blue Beetle is going to finesse in diamonds. Now, Trigger, you keep watch outside while I go in and rifle the safe. I've still got the combination Mrs. Bannister gave me. Okay, Meg. If you hear anybody coming, give me the hoot owl call. Sure, Mac, I got you. I'll pick up the real necklace this time, and we'll join Ricardo and beat it for Rio on the Cristobal tonight. I've always wanted to go to South America. Well, you're practically on your way. Now, keep your eyes and your ears open. Well, this is the library. There's the wall safe. Ah, this is going to be easy. What's that? Yeah, these old houses are certainly spooky. Well, now for the safe. Right to 12. Left twice to 6. Then right to 10. Yeah, that's got it. There's somebody coming. That's Trigger's call. Well, here's the real necklace, and now to make our getaway. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Your game is up, McCaffrey, you double-crossing insurance investigator. Uh, so you know. Yeah, the Blue Beetle knows everything. Hand over that necklace. Try and get it. That's just what I intend to do. Trigger! Call your gunman. I'll take him on, too. That's for justice. And that for Lucy Ridgway. And that for law and order. And that's for the Blue Beetle. Uh, he's out cold. Hey, Mac, come on, let's cram. Hey, come on, get up. The cops will be here any minute. Uh, help me up, Trigger. Okay. You got the necklace? Yeah. Uh, it's on the floor. Where's the blue beetle? Over there on the floor. I conked him. Oh, good work. Give me the necklace and let's go. We've just got time enough to make the boat. So long, blue beetle. I'll tell Ricardo you couldn't join us for a hand of bridge. <laughs> Hello? Bannister speaking. Who? The Blue Beetle. What? McCaffrey has the real necklace. Where? The steamship Cristobal, Pier 46. Well, I'll be right down. What? Well, all right, I won't call the police. I'll come alone. Goodbye. Go and we'll be on our way to South America. One minute. That's a very long time here. Uh, don't worry, boys. Look, those men down there. They're ready to take in the gangplank. And they hope they make it snappy. Me noives is all of a Twitter. Don't lose your nerve now, Trigger. We're in the clear. But look, the gangplank, she's going away. Yep, yep, we're off. On our way to Rio with a half a million dollars worth of jewels in our pockets. Well, shall we go below and make the game with the cards? Yeah, that's a great idea. Good for relaxing the nerves. How about it, Trigger? Swell. We only had a fourth we could play bridge. The blue, blue beetle. beetle. Yes, the blue beetle. Your fourth at bridge. And diamonds are trumps. Look out, Mac, while I rub him out. Hold it, Trigger. That's the use. He's got us. We can't get off the ship. A wise decision. Now, let's go up and visit the captain. Oh, just a minute, please. Are these the men, Blue Beetle? Yes. You're Mr. Bannister? I am. These are your men. And here's a photograph I took earlier this evening with my photoelectric camera. Of McCaffrey here at your wall safe. Oh, that was the click I heard. That's right. 
Enough evidence to convict you. Now hand over the necklace to Mr. Bannister. Well, here it is. Are these the real diamonds, Mr. Bannister? Yes, these are genuine. I put them in the safe myself when I got back from the West. I had them in a secret hiding place. I had a duplicate made, and apparently Mrs. Bannister had one made also. Then we'll turn these men over to the captain, who will send them ashore with us under guard on the pilot boat. You can prosecute them. I don't wish to prosecute. I have the real necklace. My wife has confessed, and I have forgiven her. I wish to avoid scandal and forget this case as quickly as possible. Will you see that Lucy Ridgway is released from jail and her name cleared? It shall be done immediately, and I'll see to it that she will lose nothing by her unfortunate experience. That's great. Well, the Blue Beetle's job is done. You cooks are getting off easy. Take the Blue Beetle's advice and stay away from York City. And so the Blue Beetle ended another racket, saved a foolish woman from the consequences of her first misstep, and restored the good name of an innocent young girl. The moral of this story is, one falsehood leads to many, and one misstep may lead one farther and farther along the path of crime. Further adventures of the Blue Beetle will be presented in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. a copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.